Welcome back, everyone. Smith, your host, is here to discuss a topic that will affect millions of Canadians, especially the poor and old. October 17th, 2024, will significantly impact Canada's most vital social programs, Old Age Security OAs and the Canada Pension Plan CPP. I now see your point. Another government update, why should I concentrate, accompany me. After watching this movie, you'll realize how essential these changes are and how they may affect you or a loved one. Increases to OAs and CPP benefits are deliberate. They are carefully calculated responses to many economic and social factors. Rising living costs must be considered initially. Everyone has felt the petrol and food price hikes. These hikes aim to help Canadians keep up with rising prices. Second, Canada's population is aging. About 25% of our population will be seniors by 2030. This demographic shift suggests elders need stronger help. Another important issue is income inequality. The wealth gap between Canadians is growing, and these advances fit a bigger goal to help low-income people. Finally, while the economy has recovered from the COVID-19 pandemic with great success, many Canadians are still affected. These raises help with ongoing recovery. First, analyze old age security developments. One of Canada's social security foundations is OAAs. If you're 65 or older and have lived in Canada for 10 years, you'll get paid monthly. October 17th, 2024, saw a considerable increase in OAS benefits. Officially, OAS payments will grow by half. This seems small, but for seniors on fixed incomes, it matters. This increase raises the maximum monthly OAS benefit to $1,290 for seniors 65 to 74 and $1,890 for those 75 and above. This increase affects the Guaranteed Income Supplement EI as a monthly benefit for low-income OAS members. Great news, you need not act if you have OAS. Your payments will automatically rise on October 17th, 2024. However, what does this mean practically? Consider an example. Greetings Maria, she has the highest OAS in GI 68. Her monthly earnings from various sources were $615 before the jump. Her monthly income after October 17, 2024 will be $1,750. Maria may use this increase to buy better food, pay unexpected medical expenditures, or save a little for a rainy day fund. Let's examine the Canada Pension Plan. A contributory plan, the CPP bases your payout on your working year's contributions. While different from OAS hikes, CPP revisions on October 17, 2024 are crucial. CPP retirement pension rises 30%. This increase affects current and new grantees. This increases the maximum monthly CPP retirement payment to $1,650 at 65. If you work while receiving your CPP retirement pension, your post-retirement payout will increase proportionally. These enhancements assure full support for all CPP programs, including disability and survivor benefits. Let's look at another scenario to see how this works in practice. Introducing John, he receives the standard CPP retirement payout at 67. Before the change, his CPP payout was $1,306. His monthly payment after October 17, 2024 will be $1,329. John might use this increase to help his grandchildren with school or healthcare costs. After discussing what and how much, let's discuss who qualifies for these raises. Even if you get OAS or CPP, these changes may benefit you. Still, you must understand the prerequisites. Legal residents or citizens 65 years or older who have lived in Canada for at least 10 years after turning 18 can apply for OAS. If you live abroad, you must have lived in Canada for 20 years since turning 18. CPP requires a legitimate fund contribution be 60 years old and have stopped working or severely reduced your hours to receive early pension, your income, period of residence in Canada, and CPP contributions and duration will affect your OAAs and CPP benefits. These increases will benefit everyone, but low-income Canadians will benefit most. OAS and GIs are low-income seniors' main income sources. This rise would lift thousands of seniors out of poverty. A small monthly income increase can assist protect against emergencies and unexpected costs. Additional funds can improve housing, food, and drug and therapy availability. Seniors receiving more cash straight through could reduce the strain on other social services and support systems. In addition, as low-income people earn more. They buy necessities, which helps local companies. Let me show you numbers. A single senior without income could change their OAAs and GIs monthly. A couple receiving OAAs and GIs may have monthly income changes. These rises can change lives. It could mean consistently buying fresh produce or turning up the heat in winter without financial worries. 
Understanding how these advancements fit into Canada's social security system helps understand their importance. Many call Canada's retirement income system three pillar. First pillar publicly funded OAS and GIs. A mandatory contribution scheme, the CPP, is the second pillar. Private savings and corporate pension plans are the third pillar. These efforts supplement provincial subsidies. Veteran and disability benefits promote a complete safety net. The system is progressive, so low-income people get more support. The government regularly reviews and adjusts these projects to meet Canadian standards. The October 17, 2024 modifications are due to such studies. The Canadian system is sometimes lauded for reducing elderly poverty compared to other developed nations. The raises build on that success. Though these rises are generally positive, they have drawbacks. Some economists doubt these measures will last as the population ages. They say increasing benefits now could cause funding issues later. Fairness between generations poses further questions. Rising retiree benefits may unjustly burden younger workers paying taxes and donations for these initiatives. These increases are significant, but some advocacy groups say they don't guarantee seniors a fair quality of life. OAS or CPP increases may reduce low-income seniors' eligibility for other income-tested benefits. Applying these changes to millions of recipients is difficult. Questions surround the government's ability to implement these policies properly and correctly. We should consider these perspectives when we examine these changes. They remind us that policy decisions involve many trade-offs. After discussing the what, why, and who, let's explore how to prepare for October 17, 2024. If unsure, check your OSCPP eligibility immediately. Visit the Service Canada website or call their toll-free number. Make sure Service Canada has your banking and current address. This ensures your larger salary arrives flawlessly. If you foresee a rise, review your budget. Consider how to spend this extra money. Consult a financial advisor if you're unsure how these changes may affect your finances. They can help you comprehend and plan. Watch for announcements or changes before October 17, 2024. Government plans change, so stay informed. Set a reminder for October 17, 2024 to check your bank account and confirm the raised amount. Share this information with those who might benefit from these changes. Many, especially the elderly, may not know of these increases. Let's answer some common questions. You may question how these rises affect taxes. OAS and GI are taxed, thus a hike can change your tax bracket. Still, most receivers should benefit. Taxes apply to CPP benefits. If you receive the highest OAS, OAS, or CPP, your payments will rise at the published rates. OAS and CPP recipients need not apply for these increases. Auto boosting will occur. Those under 65 will benefit from these adjustments when they become 65. These increases will affect OAS and CPP base rates. Future recipients will benefit, usually adjusted quarterly for inflation OAS and CPP. Greater rises like these are rare and usually the result of policy changes. These increases may affect your benefits. Some provincial benefits and subsidies are income tested, so your OAS or CPP may affect your eligibility. Ask your province's officials outside Canada and eligible for OAS or CPP. These rises will continue. Service Canada should have your current address and banking information. As we end our talk, let's look ahead. How will Canada's social security system evolve? Canada's aging population will drive talks on maintaining and expanding these programs. Canadians can expect more online tools and services to access and manage their benefits. Retirement is getting more personalized. Future changes may allow phased retirement or flexible CPP withdrawals. Climate change may influence our culture and economy, prompting arguments about how our social security system can adapt and accommodate disruptions. Some policy analysts advocate a universal basic income to replace or supplement programs. Though not on the agenda, this notion could influence future discussions. As people work and live in multiple countries, pension and old age security plans may be coordinated internationally. Recall that the revisions slated for October 17, 2024 are a result of continual adaptation and enhancement of our social security system. These debates must be ongoing to ensure these programs meet all Canadians' needs. Given today's coverage, let's evaluate the highlights. As on October 17, 2024, OAAs and CPP payments will rise significantly. These increases are aimed to help seniors and low-income Canadians handle rising living costs. Current receivers will be automatically updated. Although positive, these advancements might cause issues and concerns. Thus, you should be aware of and prepared for how these developments may affect you or your family. Deeper analysis of these trends should consider how they may affect different Canadian demographics. Let's explore the effects on women who have historically been more likely to be impoverished in old age due to lower lifetime salaries and job interruptions for caregiving. OA and CPP increases could benefit widows and divorcees. 
Income growth may provide a financial cushion and allow more women to live independently in later life. But instead, these achievements may not overcome the gender pension gap, but more legislation may be needed to ensure retirement security equity. Another category to consider is indigenous elderly. Retirement planning and economic stability are difficult for many indigenous people. The growing OAAs and CPP may provide some relief, but they may not always match indigenous elder care and community assistance practices.